Hey y'all, hey y'all. We are we are live. Uh thank y'all so much for joining us today. Um with our Purpose Over Pain podcast. Um today's episode, we're at episode 12. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. 12. Episode 12. Um it's been an episode that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Um, actually, it was the catalyst um, for this uh, this podcast um, as a whole. Um, but I've been wanting to do this episode for a while. Um, so today is the episode in regards to grief. Um, in the news, in on, on social media, um, you know, it seems like every single day we're hearing somebody passed away. And this is literally to the point where it's sickening. Um, you know, it, it's it's heartbreaking. Um, so what I want to do is I want to talk about um, not only the grief aspect, but I want to talk about um, what we can do to heal from it. Um, I know that grief is not a, um, it's not something that, something that you just get over. Um, And so today I have with me Miss Camille Mays, um, and I would like for her to just share her story a little bit, um, you know, as much as you're comfortable with sharing. Um, And then we can we can kind of get into some good stuff. Well, um, my name is Camille Mays, and I've done a lot of community work over the last over a decade now. Um, I worked in the community heavily, um, more grassroots. I work for organizations, but I really had a passion for the people. And back in, it was 2015 in particular, we had a lot of homicides. It had shot up like a lot. I think it was like 69%. Mm. It had shot up that year. And we were doing a neighborhood walk and we were walking around and we saw one of the memorials. And so... I was like, why, when we are driving in certain neighborhoods, people won't, like, shoot the trash out of the mm-hmm. window over mm-hmm. there. But you look in our neighborhoods, it's garbage and hair and all kind of stuff, like, mm-hmm. all in the streets. And people will be like, no, don't do that over here. It's a good neighborhood. But then they'll be quick mm-hmm. to do it, like, in their own home. And we just saw litter and, and memorials just, like, everywhere when we were walking. And so... We got to talking about art in the community, gardens in the community. But then we got to talking about, like, what the city workers and the police will have to go through to remove the memorials. Mm-hmm. And I kind of cringe because I can understand, like, how a homeowner would not want that outside their house. Like, what, whatever happened, then to right. be reminded of that. But then I could also understand from a family's perspective, or I, I wanted to. I didn't understand, you know, of course, yet. But... I just I could see how that would be sensitive for somebody to just take that take up, that down. you mm-hmm. know, and that's a memory mm-hmm. of their loved one. And so I came up with Peace Garden Project. And so we would do it for free mm-hmm. and we would plant perennials down and some annuals and we would plant flowers there, remove the teddy bears, remove the bottles and um, plant a peace garden and plant peace and love there with the community, with the families and I would always hug the moms because I'm real careful with my words. Like after mm-hmm. losing my mom when I was young, people saying they understand and telling people things will get better mm-hmm. and grief and stuff. And I don't believe that per se. I mm-hmm. don't know if it gets better. You just learn how to deal with it. Yep. But mm-hmm. I just watch my words. So I would tell the moms, you know, I, I don't understand. And I'm sorry I don't understand. I hope I don't. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry you had to go through this. I'm so sorry, you know. Mm -hmm. This is my gift. You know what I want to do for you. I wouldn't charge them, you know, because they have been through enough. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. And I did that for four years. Um, I worked with Crime Stoppers. I worked um, with community members just to do um, projects to make areas more um, active, Mm -hmm. you know, because when you activate spaces, parks and green spaces, Mm -hmm. you know, it it provides somewhat of security. Mm -hmm. And so just worked on stuff like that, really invested into public safety and investing into community spaces, art, things like that. Mm -hmm. And just kind of all over the place with a lot of community work, hands on about the stuff I was passionate about. Mm 
Right. So quick question. So when you were doing that, like how, like what was the reaction from um, or between you and the mothers or you and the family um, of those people who had... Like I, I would hug them, you know, um, the family, a lot of the families kept in touch for many years after, mm. even to this day, you know, some of the families, um, we become good friends. Some of the family members mm -hmm. and myself, um, one of the first peace gardens I did me and one of the family members that became very close friends. Um, that's a blessing. Yep. And she even got to know my son and my kids and my family, but it just it really led to a a, a small group of support like mm -hmm. down the line for me mm -hmm. a lot of the families that i worked for so i worked with them or whatever um supported them you know checked up on them maybe a year or two or three after they'll do balloon releases refresh some of the peace gardens one of them we still do every year really yep imani robinson's is coming up imani um robinson day June 30th. So I do still um, do that one. We mm -hmm. do something every year for that. Um, but it happened um, just over time. Like it, it just was so many families. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't necessarily do peace gardens for them. Like it was a group of people in the community and we would go out when it was a homicide. Uh, we would do walks to mm -hmm do things after to support to see um if anybody heard something seen anything or just like offer support resources for after um help you know it was other people in the group they help right. families get donations for you know burial costs and things mm -hmm. like that so we would go out um you know a lot of times right when something would happen Mm -hmm. Um, like, and we would be dealing with the families. A lot of them would be grieving, you know, immediately. It'll be right after whatever had right. occurred. So oh, really? Like, yeah. Now, see, that's something that I did not know. I did not know that, that you know, y'all were out there, like, right when it happened. Yep, and it's a lot of people. And I'm sure some of those same people are still doing a lot of those things. That's just mm -hmm. something I had to pull back from. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, we would go. It's a lot of different ones. Not every single one. There's some who went to, like, almost, like, everyone you mm -hmm. know in the you know inner city or whatever but i just would go to as many as i could right you know and, right and we would try and pull together any resources we knew like if they said the family needed something amongst the group of people you know we'll all try and do things as a collective in the community like mm -hmm. behind the scenes it's a network of people even to this day like what they boots on the ground, really, you know, helping people out outside of agencies, outside the city or the mm -hmm. county. And so, you know, that's what we would do. That's awesome. And so um, did that, you know, continue to do work in the community. And then in 2019, my son was murdered. Mm -hmm. And um, all the people who I worked with in the community. So sorry. Thank mm -hmm. you. It, it was so weird. And even to this day, like mm -hmm. I'm on the other end of stuff, like I'm on both sides of my work, mm -hmm. you know? And so it was surreal, like looking around at my house and all the people who we would go to families, these families, like the I was the family. Mm -hmm. And I looked around like I'm the family. Like it, it was just unreal. Like I said, even to this day, you know, even thinking about it now, you know, mm -hmm. it's upsetting, but mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it happened. And it's not to say that I was supposed to be protected in a special way other than right. anybody else. Not to say that anybody else family deserved it. But I just was like, why me of all the people like I was mm -hmm. fighting for this before it hit my door? Right, right. You now, know? do you think sometimes that um, that he was in in some some way maybe preparing you? I so like that's part of like the loss after grief. Mm -hmm. I always try and find a blessing and a lesson in whatever. So my only place of peace or the only thing I could look at that's positive out of all of this is that it pushed me into my purpose even more. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I don't. I mean, I didn't want it that way, of course. Oh, but absolutely. Yeah, I do see that like happening after. Like mm -hmm. I see it pushing me more towards the purpose and things that my heart is really true to and passionate about mm -hmm. and that I didn't just step out on and things I had to walk through 
to experience. Yeah. So like I do healing work and supportive families, but now on the other end of it, because I've experienced it, so mm-hmm. I could do it a different way. Mm. And that's, I think that's really um, deep because some of us, and, and I, I posted something um, maybe a couple of days ago, a week ago or something. And I said that, you know, you're really not really happy or you really haven't found like some type of joy until you know, like what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes, even though I think it's unfair, I think that sometimes some of us have to go through some of those things before we can actually, like you said, find our purpose. Um, You know, we can really kind of delve into, you know, what, what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Um, because, at, you know, as you all know, um, you know, I have experienced the loss as well with Glenn. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think that the loss is different, but then the loss is the same. Um, because I think it's, it's, a, it's still a loss. Um, and I think that when we're going through, like, our, our grief and they say, like, there's the different stages to grief and all of that mm-hmm. stuff, um, you know, when I first looked at it, because, you know, when I was going through my process, um, I basically one day I, I, well, one night I was asleep and, um, I was like, you know, like I was crying so bad to where like, I, I almost felt like my heart was breaking. Um, like I like was clenching my chest, like, and I looked up and I said, okay, can, can, can you die from a heartbreak? And, you know, I got some, you know, I Googled it, of course. And, you know, Google said, you know, it, it, it said like, yes, but in some type of medical term or something like that. But anyway, um, you know, then the next thing I Googled was, you know, not really because I don't want to I didn't want to get over it. I wanted to move through it. Mm hmm. Um, and so, you know, I started to look that up and as it, you know, began to talk about like the different stages of grief and, um, you know, being angry and things like that, I, I tried to put a timeline on it and say, okay, this is going to be, you know, I'm going to be this way for six months and I'm going to be this way for three months or, you know what I'm saying? And then I got to it and I was like, no, you can't do that. No, it's not a handbook. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's not a handbook. It's, it's you know, it, it because still, you know, two years later, I'm, you know, I still have, you know, I still cry. I still, you know, um, and I just think about, you know, everybody who reached out to me, you know, you being one like that meant the world to me um, that, you know, even though I may not talk to you for another year, you know, um, but to know that you reached out in that manner in that moment. And, you know, some people say, Oh, they probably did it because they went through it, but I don't think so, you know, because I know you, Mm -hmm. um, but you know, just for somebody to reach out to you in that manner. Um, and then, you know, there were some people that I I felt like they should have, um, that didn't, um, what are your thoughts on that? I'm glad you asked me that. Don't feel no way about it Mm -hmm. because everybody don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't know what to say, Mm -hmm. you know, or how to console or comfort you, especially in my case. Like a lot of people's like, they just don't know what that feel like. Mm -hmm. They just don't even, they can't imagine. They don't whatever. But what a lot of people don't realize is all they had to do is just be right. You know, just be there, be around or whatever. Mm -hmm. Nothing had Mm -hmm. to be done. Mm -hmm. And then some people can't, they care about us so much. It might sound crazy to some people, but they just can't take sadness like that. Yeah. You know, so I don't be upset. I just accept the support I got and appreciate it, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. I've just been blessed with a lot of support, not to even, mm-hmm. I just don't have no expectations from people. Like people be going through their own stuff. You never yep. know that too. Yeah. You know? and, and that's definitely, you know, something that I did have to come to terms with. Um, you know, I sat with that, um, you know, you gave me, um, a book, a journal of sorts. Um, and then I had a couple of other people that gave me books and journals and stuff. And, you know, I may not have finished it, but I, I did, you know, I got in and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, um, because, you know, you can't really like, for me, it was hard 
yeah, it's hard you to know. write out emotions when mm-hmm. you're going through them, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And then, but but I felt like you know that was a that was a release for me, you know, because I could not talk to him per se, you know. Um, I could not, you know, there yes, there were there were, you know, people around me and, you know, friends and family and stuff like that. And it was just like, you know, even to this day, I'll still kind of drop something down. You know, mm-hmm. I can't talk to him, you know, mm-hmm. so I have to do the best thing that I can, which is to write down like how I feel, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, I didn't want to end up being mad, you know, um, which I got mad. You know, I got angry. I remember one time I, I just, I yelled and I cried and I was just like, oh my God, you know, like you should be here, you know. Um, and then I was like, well, that's kind of selfish. But then I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like it was just, it was just a barrage of emotion. It's just like, but then at the end of the day, I said, you're still here. You know, you are still here. And so you have to move forward for those that are also still here. You know, his kids, you know, your mm-hmm. kids are looking at you and, you know, so you got to come on. want you to be like that. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, so mm-hmm. I always say like the very thing that knocked me down is what picked me up. Mm. And that's deep. Yeah. That's that's really deep. I I, I, I like that um, because, like I said, that's I think that some of us, that's honestly what it takes. You know, um, I think about you know, a lot of stuff that I've been through and a lot of stuff that I see other people be through, you know, go through. And I'm just like, they really done been through some stuff or I really done been through some stuff, but I'm still here, you know? And it's like, yeah, you're still here and you're strong. Like, you know, a and lot it can of- be worse. Exa- it's some people mm-hmm. who, I mean, it's just worse. Like it's some mothers mm-hmm. out here who lost more than one child. Yeah. You know, yeah. more than one to violence mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. You know, for every moment, although I hate like how things that it happened Mm -hmm. and then it happened, I'm still grateful, you know, for every moment. Mm -hmm. And I like I love like your spirit, like um, when when things like that, when when it happened to me, when I, you know, lost somebody close to me, um, there were certain people that I looked at. You were one of them. Um, Jamila was one of them. Um, Both of you, you know, y'all was just so sweet, like. I y'all gave me that bag and I just went home and I just boo <laughs> I just boo Um, but um, you know, I look at y'all, I looked at y'all and I said, you know, that's motivation right there, you know, because at the very least, you know, y'all lost y'all sons, you know, and and like I said, not to kind of compare and you know, but just if they can do it, I know that it's possible. You that's know, that's kind of how I was like looking at other people like Mm -hmm. other mothers like people would ask me are you going to therapy and did you because that's all people know Mm -hmm. and i I do um go to group now and then and i did go a little more frequently or whatever at first i didn't want to i thought it was like trauma bonding or whatever now that's something that i have not done i have not went to therapy I, I was like, you know, I'll go or whatever. Maybe I need to talk to other people who went through it because Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm gonna make it. Mm -hmm. You know, and Mm -hmm. I just didn't. And so I talked to some of them. I seen them, like you said, other people Mm -hmm. and just talked to them. Um, We had a healing ceremony or whatever. Um, But what's crazy is that some of the people who was my support, they went through it when I did too. Mm. Like at the, at same, the same time, time. like Jamila kind of went through whatever around the same time, mm-hmm. you know, but it, I, what I learned is that it is, it do help talking to people who've been through it for mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. and that ain't for everybody. Right. So what I did and what worked for me in my healing journey, somebody else might need therapy. They might need some medicine. They might need mm-hmm. um, therapy and some other stuff. Right. You know, right. but. It's not for us to yep, say. Yep, well, whoever mm-hmm. needs. But for me, it's been like nature. For me, it's been the singing bowls. Mm-hmm. And for me, like and I love that talking to mm-hmm. other people, telling my story, knowing that my strength motivate people mm-hmm. or that I can help others heal, you know, and just going through it. Like you said, moving through it. Mm-hmm. I get mad. I get upset. I was just telling somebody, everybody, it's not always peace, love, and light. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, right. It's dark, it's anger, it's all of mm-hmm. that, but you gotta balance it out. Mm-hmm. Like I be mad, I be mad, I can't do nothing. 
Right, right. You know, but right. Yeah, so we do what we can. Mm-hmm. You know, we live and we learn, you know, from people, other people, what they did. And some stuff like people was telling me to breathe and do yoga. And I was like, what? If y'all don't get the hell out of my face? <laughs> Like my son, you know, like what are y'all talking about? Breathing, yeah, what breathing mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And then one day I was sitting there and I was thinking about whenever I got upset, you know that feeling you said mm-hmm. like your heart was just gonna stop, the panic attacks or whatever. Like mm-hmm. the first thing people say is just breathe, breathe. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it is in the breath. It, it's all in the breath. A lot of it. And mm-hmm. so I started diving into that into the sound healing, into the yoga. I don't do yoga. I'm not no every day or every week mm-hmm. yoga person. But when I do do it, I feel so good. So much better. Yep. And I practice breathing. And I really been practicing, like, my breathing. Mm-hmm. And um, that's helped. I haven't had no panic attacks since all of that stuff happened. And, um, yeah, you don't get over it. You just learn how to yeah the wave of it yeah you know like i had a moment today his birthday was tuesday Mm -hmm. you know um my sister called before i was coming here and i was like i actually got to do a podcast and i kind of was like feeling away too Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and i was like dang what was i thinking (laughs) like why did i pick you know like knowing whatever but then i was like no sometimes it's good to just ride the wave of it get it Mm -hmm. out talk it out I talked with a friend earlier, just went out for a drive, sorted out, you know, your thoughts, my and thoughts mm-hmm. and stuff. And, you know, that's just what you got to do. You mm-hmm. got to figure out what it is for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, and I know and, and it took me so long to do this um, episode because um, for me, you know, I, I know how I feel. You know, mm-hmm. I, I actually created a journal, um, a grief journal. And that particular journal, like. It took me so long. And I, I like when I first started working on it, I, I like went in. Mm-hmm. And then once I actually started like really like working on it, I was like, oh, I cannot do this. And I backed away for like a couple of months. Um, and then I was like, you know what? OK, let me do this again. And then the podcast and then I finished the journal and then I'm like, OK, I need to do this. But I'm like, Ugh, I don't know if I'm comfortable enough. You know, mm-hmm. um, and so I knew that it would be like, oh, I don't know. And I was prepared for that, you know, because and I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have felt no type of way mm-hmm. like, you know, because I get it. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. Um, and so, you know, I'm just glad that you, you know, said yes um, yeah. to come, you know, um, because I think that, you know, like you said, it's, it's good to get it out. It's good to talk about it. You may not be able to talk about it you know, as much or as freely as you want to, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how people feel like, Oh, you should be over that, you know, by now. But I know that with me, um, being, you know, that wasn't my husband. Oh, you should be over that. Yeah. But you don't really get over stuff, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's Mm -hmm. what I try and tell people is just how you deal with it. Mm -hmm. Like people be like, time will heal. No, time don't heal all the time. Some people it might do, but yeah. that's not always. Yeah, the case. yeah, like like you know? that's something that you're gonna sit with, you mm-hmm. know, for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not, it's not an easy thing, and you everybody know. Everybody do grieve different. Mm-hmm. Some people, people might think they don't care or anything, but they they care. They might not show it. Like my sister said, hi. You might show it. Hi. He don't got the uh. Oh, I do see the comments. Patsy, Patsy said I should have been on this segment. I definitely should have had y'all. I know that um, he said at one point that we can do um, because you're in Chicago, uh, we can still get you on. So I definitely do want to, you know, have you and sister on the segment on the show. Um, but Patsy, how do you feel about grief? Like, how are you dealing with grief right now? I know, um, and and. Patsy has been dealing with some grief. Um, she had two major losses, um, her mom and her sister, um, and both of which, you know, I loved dearly. Um, and so, like, those two, you know, losses, um, one after the other, um, I don't know if she's still watching. Um, but, you know, I know that that can mentally take a toll on you, you know, Um and so she said, I drink and cry all the time. 
oh yeah and she lost her father in 2001 so like literally like it's just been like loss after loss after loss um and you know I definitely understand like I like I don't want you drinking all the time because um you know when we go through a, a loss um you know I, I said a while ago that you can pick up and this is something that's in the um the grief journal that you can pick up habits um, you can pick up good habits and you can pick up bad habits as a way of coping. Um, some of the habits that I, be I believe that I picked up, I did pick up a little bit of drinking because I'd be drinking. Um, you know, I picked up, you know, at one point in time, I, I, I would have a lot of people at my house, um, where I, I needed them. I think it was like for maybe like the first month or so I needed them at my house, um, because I didn't want to sit alone with the memories um, throughout the day. You know, at night I was a whole mess, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because it wasn't anybody there but the kids. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think it's important that we that we really um, examine ourselves and the type of uh, habits that we do pick up and just be cautious of it. Like I'm not, you know, like scolding or, you know, nothing like that. Um, but I just want you to be cautious of, and I just want you to be healthy. Um, it's painful and it's something that you'll never get over, but you'll learn to do it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, because at the end of the day, like I said, you're still here. Um, you know, Tisa wouldn't, T Tisa would not want you, you know, uh, crying all day. Ma would not want you, you know, drinking all day. Like, you know, um, so it's hard. Your dad wouldn't want you like it's so hard. Like I know it is. Um, and, you know, I think that me, myself, you know, going through a loss, her going through a loss, like you said, you know, people that are going through the loss at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's kind of hard because it's like, you know, I want to be there for you but then it pulls at my heartstrings at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, now we both cry. Right. <laughs> now right. we both crying. Um, at one point I even said, I said, I don't know. I don't want to cry no more. I just don't want to cry no more. Did you ever get to that point? Yeah. Like now, mm -hmm. but it just come and you can't stop it. So mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. just gotta let it out. Patsy said, Sometimes my daddy told hurt. me to drink. I said, sometimes your mind tell you you're okay, but your heart don't forget. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I mean, I, I, I still got boxers, um, in a, in a bin downstairs, you know, I, I still have stuff. I still have his stuff. Um, you know, I, I thank God that, you know, there's, there was a relationship with the kids, you know, so, you know, I'm able to see, you know, my grandbaby, I don't care what nobody say. That's my grandbaby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm able to see her. As a matter of fact, she was just at my house today. Um, you know, so that like, you know, with really looking at the blessings that you get from it, you know, mm -hmm. um, the what is it called the sound bowls the singing bowls the singing bowls oh, it's a sound bath. so sound bath so can you explain that a little bit yeah so the singing bowls it, it's a form of sound healing I before all this happened I was like a geek for like frequencies and mm -hmm. sound and vibrations and just stuff mm -hmm. and so they always said that it was healing frequencies and so when everything happened I want to explore everything outside of therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, so all the nature, the grounding, the breathing, mm -hmm. the yoga, the whatever, the mm -hmm. singing bowls, like whatever. I want to um, practice it. And it's cool. I love crystals and it's a pretty cool thing. And so um, I decided to get some singing bowls. Mm -hmm. And everybody always asks, like, how did I learn how or whatever? It's like the first time I played, I just played. I just. Really? So you just was one with my bowls and it, it was just that from there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I didn't want to play for others and stuff until I got through, you know, whatever process I felt like I had to go through. Cause I felt like my energy had to be a certain way to mm -hmm. do stuff for other people. So Absolutely. I wanted to go through um, that, you know, healing phase for myself. I did the sound baths for myself. And then I started venturing out 
because it had an effect. Well, first of all, when I first started playing, I started crying. And I was like, wait a minute, this ain't how this is supposed to work. Why am I crying? Like, what's going on? Right. Like, I thought I was supposed to be happy. These are the happy folks. But I think, in a sense, I had to release all of that tension, all of that stress, all of that trauma. Mm -hmm. And that's what that was. Because mm -hmm. then after that, it didn't never really happen so much. You know, maybe like once have I cried, like since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a day that I had took on a lot of other people's stuff. Oh, And I was like, oh, I think it rubbed off a little bit. And I even caught it. And I wasn't feeling sad. I just, all of a sudden, just was crying. I was like, I think I took on all that stuff and it was a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, but being aware of that, protecting your energy, making sure you in right spirits when you do stuff like that mm -hmm. um, so that it don't take over you. Right. Because I just had a little cry and I was good. And I was mm -hmm. like, what's going on? Like, they, you know, mm -hmm. but I realized what was happening, like I said. So with the singing bowls, once I started seeing the effects it had on me and over time, like, how I felt better, how it relaxed me, how it helped me focus, and how it helped me to do stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to share with other people because I can show people better than I can tell them about the bowls. Exactly. Like it's just something you got to experience. It's mm -hmm. a vibe. You got to feel it, see it, experience it, hear it in person. Now, weren't you down here at one point? Mm -hmm. I um, still come do them. You I just haven't done know. one in a Will while. You? Yeah. Yeah, but I do them here and. Um, Alana at Earth Angel Studio upstairs, she does a lot of events and I'll mm -hmm. be doing a lot of things with her okay. coming up this summer and in the future. Okay. Um, she have a lot of um, activities. She has Feminine Fridays and then Wednesday morning she does something for the veterans from 9 to 11 mm -hmm. here at the Phoenix. And so it'll be some other things um, coming up. So oh, that's tuned. what's up. Definitely, definitely. I will definitely make sure um, I keep watch out it's for like I that. I work here and I don't work here. <laughs> right, right, like everybody's right. Everybody's my coworker. Like they, it's like I work they call in the you building. In. But I just be in here like I work here, but I literally don't work here. I just do a lot here with mm -hmm. people and just be here all the time mm -hmm. and support. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, it's a, it's dope. You know, it's a dope atmosphere. Um, you know, when I come, I, I get a little, you know, my my little entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. entrepreneurial, I can't even say the word. It it comes out of me, you know, and so I love it though. And the, the masseuse. See, I see I, I got a thing with 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 the masseuse though. And having hands. I I don't like people touching on me like that. You know what? Y'all have to get over that. It's very <laughs> professional. I'm gonna tell you, even though you know, some of the ladies have a hard time probably keeping it professional, mm -hmm. but it it was hey. very professional. It's a man, mm -hmm. and he has very good hands, and it rolled the tension right on up out of mm. me. It was nothing unprofessional. It didn't feel like uncomfortable or, mm -hmm. or like sexual. A massage. Really oh no, feel. no, I, I not it, like that. It covered up, very mm -hmm. like real cool. Are you cool? Is you comfortable? Is this mm -hmm. okay? And you know, asking you where. Like I, I had another masseuse too. She's dope. I met her from some people in here, and I wonder if she was ever in here at one time. But anywho, I love both of them, mm -hmm. her and him. And mm -hmm. I would probably never go to anybody unless they left out of town. Really? And I think he might maybe be at some point. And I don't know she, if she's still here. Get this out my yeah, back. I'm talking Lord. about rolling it out. Really? The, I mean, I could feel the tension rolling out. Mm -hmm. Like, for real. And I felt like I was going to float up out of here. And I was just saying today, like, I need to schedule my massage again because... Really? I had like something going on with my shoulder uh -huh. and it's like really relaxed. And like I said, it was like balls, literally attention. And that's what happened. So although I did all of these different things, I never been to get a massage for a couple of years. So mm -hmm. all of that was up in there, mm -hmm. you know, and I felt a lot refreshed since then, mm -hmm. like overall. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So there's one thing I, I, I wanted to also um, like, when you when you go through grief, um, and I know that you you mentioned earlier about trauma bonds. Um, so like I said, when when I went through it, um, I had to have people around me. Like I had to be out. Like I I started doing my pop ups and stuff. Like literally every weekend, I was doing a pop up, um, and so I was very very busy. Um, I, and I kept myself busy, you know, and during that time, um, 
I, I met people and I think I bonded with people that I probably should not have um, because of that trauma bond. And I'm not talking about like no man or nothing like that. I'm talking mm -hmm. about like friends, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I think that that's another thing, um, even with dealing with men, you know, still to this day, I kind of have to, you know, be like, okay, is this, is this a trauma bond that you're building because you actually, you know, you miss him and you're lonely or is it something that you really, you know, enjoy this time with this person? Yeah. And then sometimes people just be away and they want somebody to be like that with them, mm -hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, you know, it's, I think it's dangerous um, because when you have, when you've built that bond and then, you know, not, not when you get over it, but when, huh, I don't know how to, how to word it. Um, like when the initial, the mask or whatever that you want to call it is gone it's like, dude, I wouldn't even kick it with you in, in normal circumstances. Well, I think that's because, like, sometimes when you're going through whatever, your mind be clouded. Mm -hmm. You don't be focused. You mm -hmm. be um, disoriented in a sense. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of that. I think, I don't know, like, the trauma bonding. I mean, it's okay to go through stuff with somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And y'all support each other. You motivate each other, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's some people who it's more like the misery, like company. Right. Mm. That's more like of what I was thinking of when I said like we hold want you to be down with them. Like mm -hmm. it's okay to like you know to go through it with somebody, but when you stand in a low vibrational place or space mm -hmm. and you're dragging somebody into that space with you mm -hmm. because of whatever, then that's a little different. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think you know when you go through stuff, sometimes you just make different decisions because your mind mm -hmm. it just be you know not all the way there. Right, right. Yeah. Come out the clouds one day and be like, what is going on? What? <laughs> Who was you? Well, how did this get like this? And right, right. Oh my goodness. Right. And then it's like, yeah, then yeah. Like, okay, let me come out of this cloud. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. want to start to pick up the pieces a little bit. Yeah. And, and you know, like, um, I, I was at one point, I was walking to, I was talking to my sister. Um, and we were kind of talking about, um, you know, the, you know, everything that we've been through, um, you know, we were, and, and we were talking about grief, um, you know, in, in my situation, it was, you know, the loss of, you know, somebody in, in her situation, it was the, you know, maybe the loss of a relationship or whatever the case may be, but in both terms, they're both grief. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we were talking about how, um, I know that for me, when it first happened, I basically kind of, like I was, I was, I was not there, you know, even when it came down to, you know, my children, I know that you have other children as well. Um, so when it came down to my children, like I really wasn't there. Like it, it, there was like a three month period where I literally was like, I was there, but I was not there. Um, you know, how did you deal with that with, you know, the other children that you have? Well, I only have one that's like under 18. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And my oldest got three kids or whatever, but the three little kids, like, they add joy, mm -hmm. you know? So it, mm -hmm. it's, it was good to be present with them to, you know, to have that. Mm -hmm. um, my 17-year-old, I don't know what he would say, but overall, I was present. I never fully withdrew, mm -hmm. but I was like, not all the way on point, mm -hmm. but he understood that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I never like wherever. Well, I'm gonna say never because I, of course, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't a little child, mm -hmm. and he knew and understood what I was going through. Too, right at the same time, and I was able to be there at the times that he needed it, you know, the most. Mm -hmm. But he understood like a lot. Yeah, he was really, he's been actually very understanding of, and that's that's good. What we both, you know, mm -hmm. one day he just was like, I didn't know you had all this stuff you're responsible for that you do, I didn't know all of this stuff, you know. And I was like, I didn't want you to, right? Right, like, you know, I don't want you worrying about this stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So he's just he's real special and he do understand a lot, yeah. yeah and so I didn't. 
I wasn't fully withdrawn. I don't know how to explain it. I was, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't ever all the way not there. Like I got up, I forced myself up. Every yeah. Day and, yeah. You know, whatever. But and I think, easy. Yeah, yeah. And I think maybe that's what I mean. Cause I, you know, of course, you know, I, I think I took like maybe like a month. I took a month off of work. Um, so, you know, I was there. But I was there, but I they, wasn't they there. It was just like, kind of like, like cook, yeah, understand. yeah, and that. Like, we miss you cooking, mm -hmm. mom, and mm -hmm. you know, getting back into mm -hmm. certain things, yeah, that we didn't do. Um, and then, I mean, like around certain times, like knowing why I might be a certain way, we just already know. Yeah, you know, I don't gotta remind him. He thinking about it, going through it too. But we be there. We go through it on our own, but we still be there for each other through. Right. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, so. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the, like, I, I, cause I remember when, um, um, something happened with my oldest son and, um, it, it literally dawned, no, 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 I take that back. I asked him, you know, I said, what's, what's wrong? You know, like you tripping, like, you know, this is not you. What's going on? And and he said, things are not the same as they was two years ago. And I'm like, well, what happened two years ago? And he like, I knew what happened two years ago. You know, I just wanted him to talk about it, you know. And so when he said it, I said, you know, I had to take a step back. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm tripping. You know, like, you know, these, they were around. So why wouldn't they have some type of feeling, you know, about right. that? And then they need mental wellness days mm -hmm. too. It's been days, you know, my son, he needed to stay at home. Mm -hmm. He was having a day, mm -hmm. you know, just like I have a day. And I mm -hmm. had to allow that space. Yep. You know, yep. so I think it's just allowing him the space to have those moments absolutely and know? yeah and and it's like you know because they're they're kids they're children but they're human beings as well right. um and so you know just like you feeling terrible on and monday they feel terrible too. Or you can't mm -hmm. expect a child or a teenager to absolutely. have emotional intelligence of an adult yep we barely you know are sort through certain things with mm -hmm. grief, so yeah yep yep and and that was you know that was one of the uh, or is, I should say, one of the biggest takeaways for me um, is, you know, to remember them, you know, and to remember. So I've, you know, been trying to actively, you know, like when you said you, you're trying to now nah, I got to get it all back together. You know, yeah. now I got I got to I got to round everybody up and but I got to go back or think mm -hmm. you're going to go back how you were. Right. Like you're not the same beat mm -hmm. from two years ago. Right, so right. You ain't going back. You're just picking up the pieces where they at and going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you know, and it's that's crazy, you know, when you say you you picking up the pieces because it's literally, you know, some there's some aspect of, you know, your life that literally just shatters. Yeah. You know. Um, it's a new normal that you have to get, you know, get used to. Um, you know, I remember um you know, the next day after um, I wanted to pick up the phone or I wanted to text and say, hey, good morning. Yeah, or like my house, like it's so quiet in the mornings and at night now without Buka there, like mm -hmm. it'd be dead silent. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even in the morning, the stillness of the morning still bothered me because it yeah. wasn't ever like that when he was there. Yeah, yeah. You know, very rarely. Mm -hmm. So does you do, do you do anything outside of like the breathing or anything like that that um helps you like when you do get in those into those moments um no but i found taking a trip every three months help period, <laughs> period. well maybe about three four months a couple of every so many months uh-huh getting out away from the normal scenery but it might not like it, it's probably a, become an expensive thing to do but i mean you know, just getting out in nature. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. but the trip is the best medicine. But you know what you should do, though? And I, you may have this on the books or in your brain. I don't know. Like, you know, like orchestrate or coordinate a trip for some ladies. Oh, yeah. Retreat. I'm working mm -hmm. on that. I'm going on a retreat in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. But um, my goal, like, 
bus at some point is to have a meditation bus and mm-hmm. you do singing bowls and like a mobiles in and and mm-hmm. then to do a retreat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, a retreat <laughs> would be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, looking to do something like that in the future. I think I think that would be really, really I think that would be dope. I think that would be really dope. Yeah. I think that would be really dope. Um but I think, but like I said, why are you looking like that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> but like I said, um, I think that, um, you know, like with the journey, um, just kind of watching you as, um, you know, before everything happened and, you know, and now I think that the journey that you've gone on, um, like, I think it's to be like, I don't want to say applauded because it's like, well, damn, I don't want to be applauded for, you know what I'm like, saying? Like, I know what you're saying. No, like I was talking to my friend today and I was just telling her sometimes I just feel like I'm just trying to catch my place. Mm. And she was like, but from where she stand, I'm grounded. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I'll receive that mm-hmm. you know and just sit in that mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. you know yeah and just sit with walking through my purpose or walking through the journey yeah like i feel i do as i feel you mm-hmm. know my heart lead me to do it and mm-hmm. that's it's been working so like why do we worry and stress about stuff when everything been working or what place do i need to Fine. Like, yeah, I'm right where I need to be at this moment. Yeah, and that's what we'd be worried about what happened and what's going to happen instead of being in the moment. Mm-hmm. And I think I I think that's a really good um that's a really good takeaway um to because a lot of times like we pull ourselves back into that you know we pull our ourselves back into in um the the morning of it. Um, and I think like, I looked at, I looked up and I'm like, okay, you know, the difference between grief and mourning, you know, the mourning is the crying, the, you know, the, the, I can't get up out of bed, the, you know, the grief again, it's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be there. Um, I think that when you get to the, the mourning, you know, I think that there, and, and, and I could be wrong, you know, I'm not no therapist or you know but i think that the morning i think that that shouldn't last too long um i think that that shouldn't last too long again i don't have a time frame you know um because i think on the side of you know just being healthy you know what i mean um and like you said you want to look at and you want to say well i'm still here you know, and would he or she want me to, you know, be be so sad and crying all the time and stuff like that? Um, but I think, you know, it's all a part of, you know, a journey that we have to go through. Um, you know, some of us have, you know, go through that journey, whether it be, you know, mom, dad, um, you know, just some or just somebody special to you, you know, that has passed away. Um, again, you know, even still, you know, um, some people are struggling with, you know, the loss of children, the loss of, you know, like I said, a parent or, you know, and then you have, you know, the grief with people are struggling with the loss of jobs and, you know, friends. And it's, it's just so much that's going on right now um, that I think that, um, you know, we definitely could use, you know, a lot more love, yeah. <laughs> a lot more love. love. Ooh, Absolutely. Yeah, people need love and mm-hmm. nurturing and all of that. Like mm-hmm. that's, it's so cliche, but that's like, everybody just needs a little more love. That's what's wrong with yeah. Yeah. And I think because we're hurting so much, mm-hmm. um, you know, we, you know, everybody said, oh, you got to be healed. You got to be healed. You know, and, and, and people laugh at that. But like, no, that's a real thing. Yeah. Like, there, you know, there's traumas and there's things that happen to us. And, you know, and we definitely need to heal from that in order to be better for the next time or yeah. not the next time necessarily. But, you know, just, just moving period. forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Well, 
I wanted to tell you again, thank you so, so much for joining me tonight. Um, I really, you. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't know. Maybe it's this new setup or what. I don't know. Um, but I definitely enjoy talking to you. Um, definitely. Do you have anything coming up with the um, the sound bowls? I do. Well, I don't have a date, but we will be. I'll be here in mm -hmm. the summer. And then we have a series of events um, in the parks. Okay. So we're going to be getting people out into nature. Okay. And so I'm really looking forward to that. So that'll be coming up. So um, we'll share with you so you can share. Absolutely. I definitely will share. I definitely yes, will be come. there. Yes. yes. Look, I was just about to say I will be there because I think that, you know, even with, um, you know, I think it's, it's good to try out different methods yep. of healing, you know, um, because really, honestly, you know, you could have. You could do this all day long and still be the same messed up person, you know, and you never know what may work for you, you know. Right. And then, yeah, that's just been how I find my balance. That's one of the ways I do a lot of stuff, but that's a big part of how I find balance. Mm -hmm. And I do have a lot of belief and faith that it do help. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And I, you know, and like I said, just looking at your journey and everything and, you know, I, I definitely appreciate you for being here. I appreciate you for sharing your story. Um, go home and uh, give grandma a big kiss for me. I will. Because <laughs> she called Beyonce. I'm going to say I was with Beyonce, grandma. <laughs> Dude, that is you so funny. Beyonce. Right. I know that's right. See you later. See you later. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thank y'all so much for joining in today. Um, this was a great conversation. See you next time. Yay! It don't want to let us go. We still go. It don't want to let us go. It don't want to let us go. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Since we, okay, you all can download. There you go. Dang. Oh, we, you all can download. Um, I'm, where am I found at? On all streaming platforms, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and sometimes on the TikTok. I got to figure out how to edit and do all that.